I'm Roger Taylor, this is my little boat Ming Ming, she's a modest little boat, little Corby, which uh, is a very favourite starter boat, but I uh, consider it to be my finisher boat, having always been a contrarian. She's completely rebuilt, modified, honed, adjusted to, um, for the kind of sailing I do, which is very long distances offshore and generally non-stop. Uh, and the whole sort of principle behind the boat is that it can be sailed inside from the hatchway. So I very rarely exit the hatch. Um, everything is designed that I can manipulate sails, steering gear, whatever it is, without having to go on deck. So I spend my time below uh, warm, uh, dry, uh, relaxed, loose clothing, very rarely ever wear wet weather gear. Um, and it's like a sort of extended monastic retreat. As far as the Jester Challenge is concerned, as soon as I read about it in 2005, I knew that I'd participate, uh, mainly because I started my ocean sailing uh, in the early 70s, uh, sailing in the uh, 1974 single-handed Trans-Tasman yacht race. And that was the very early style yacht race. Uh, there were 10 yachts in that race, most of them self-built, uh, no real racing yachts, no sponsorship, no commercialism. Um, it was just a, a pure Corinthian challenge for individual skippers. And that's, of course, how the, the original transatlantic races started. And I just love the idea that, that uh, what the Jester Challenge does is that it, it in, almost brings us full circle to the original spirit of the transatlantic races. So as soon as I read about it, I wanted to contribute to that because I believe in it very strongly. Uh, the Jester Challenge is a very, very loose sort of uh, concept and uh, although it's basically to Newport, Rhode Island, uh, the main idea is, is that every skipper should get their boat to wherever they want to get to in good order and that is the principle. We're not racing, we're not competitive and uh, I've become very uh, attached to high latitude sailing over the last few years. Um, I've been to the Arctic, um, to Iceland, Greenland, Jan Mayen Island. Uh, and what I very well will do for this voyage, instead of going to Newport, I mean, sure, it's a lovely, lovely place, um, but I prefer wild, uh, more exotic places, is that um, uh, I will, as it were, turn right past Greenland rather than left. And uh, I. I will try and get into the Arctic Circle to the west of Greenland which will mirror the voyage I made last year where I sailed in the ice in the Arctic Circle on the east of Greenland. Oh, that's that Ming Ming, Roger! Yay! Go Roger, go! <laughs> well, here we are, we're uh, Almost exactly four days out from Plymouth now, and we've finally got a decent breeze to really power us out west off soundings and into the Atlantic proper. This is a rather serious sort of update now. It's the uh, 26th of June, so our 35th day at sea. And this is where we are, we're in 60. 42 north, 5331 west, and the good news is that that puts us well to the to the west of Greenland, which is one of the first um, objectives of this voyage. However, there's some bad news as well. Here's Cape Farewell, the southerly tip. This is Cape Desolation here, and our position right at the moment is that cross there 150 miles to the west and we were proceeding quite nicely up the Davis Strait however at just after midnight here about 20 miles to our east we got a really bad knockdown we've been in heavy weather for two days now a terrific gale part of the time easing a little bit now but it's been pretty rough we got knocked down I got thrown out of my bunk across the cabin, caught my ribs on the corner of the chart table 
and I'm afraid I have um, broken a rib. So that puts pay to continuing with the voyage. I have thought about the possibility of putting in to one of the Greenland ports, but this is a terribly dangerous coastline. Uh, it's the mother of all lee shores if you get a westerly. The, the harbour's almost impossible to sail into, and this time of year there'll still be a lot of sea ice here, and then icebergs carving off these glaciers. Uh, there's only two harbours anyway, and these are much further north that can actually lay up a yacht, because that would be the only thing I could do. So all in all, the better option uh, is just to turn around now and do our best to get us back to, to Plymouth um, safe and sound. It's going to be a bit of a painful voyage, I think, but uh, well, there you go. You go to sea on your own. Um, you've got to take what comes.